here. Look at you working on step run. Boy, I wish I had a camera right now. It's on camera, me oh. cursing these things because they don't <laughs> fit right. What's up guys, welcome back to the infamous project. A super, super hot Sunday afternoon here in Texas. I had the AC blasting in the shop. I've turned it off to make sure it doesn't create too much background noise. And I've been trying to get organized and ready for the rest of the week. And I was looking at Justin's black notch project behind me and I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and drop that K member out of the car. And if you guys have watched the previous videos, they were really in depth. There was no real editing. It was shot real time. And Jerry was nice enough to hold the camera and follow me around while we did that. Well, Jerry's not here today, so kind of going to be back to regular style production. And yeah, so we got that motor out. We got the transmission out, radiator, all of that good stuff. But ultimately, the engine bay needs to get prepped to be painted satin black. And then the Scott rod panels are going to go on. In order to do that, we really need to take as much well, pretty much everything out of the engine bay. And I've decided now to actually drop the whole K-member out and just have it on this dolly on the ground here. And the reason for that, number one, so that I can get paint all up in the frame rails, everything else, so I'm actually gonna be painting up in the inner wheel wells and everything else in here. Actually, sort of almost like we did with Jerry's 93 hatch and just getting everything all cleaned up and all, I guess, consistent from a color standpoint. And what that will also allow us to do is I think when his new motor shows up from Prestige, I think I'm going to mount it in the K-member on the dolly. And I think I'm going to actually set the car down on the new motor and T56 setup and go about it that way. Um, just avoids some of the headaches of trying to, you know, fish everything down or maybe I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I'm dropping the K member out just because I need the access in the bay. So the only things I really didn't show you guys on camera is I took the brake lines off, or I should say the flex lines, and drained out the master cylinder. So got rid of all the brake fluid, put caps on the backs of the calipers, caps on the lines. I disconnected the power steering, the little cooler tube here. So those have been drained and blocked off. And the reason for that is just to mitigate as much unwanted fluid dripping on the floor as possible. We want to try and stay as clean as we can. So in reality, I'm uh, going to unbolt the sway bar and I'll leave the end links and the sway bar and everything intact on it. So going to unbolt it from the mount off the frame rail. We are going to undo the main bolts that are holding the K-member in here. We got to undo the steering shaft that's going into the rack. And what else? That's pretty much going to be it to, um, to drop the K-member out. Of course, there's bolts back here as well. So that's going to be the name of the game. I'll probably, I'm going to put the car up. We'll do the steering shaft, get that out of the way. I'll drop out. Probably is there six bolts holding the K member in. I'll drop four out all the way up in the air, just enough to kind of keep it in there. Um, undo the struts from the top. Actually, almost forgot about that off the um, caster camber plates. And in fact, maybe I can undo, maybe I'll undo all the K member bolts. We'll see. Anyways, stick around. We'll get this out. We'll get it out pretty quick. I think this will be on the ground within 30 minutes. So let's see how I do.
1K number out. All right, so pretty much 30 minutes exactly. K member was out and got a little bit more of the wiring, the starter harness, oxygen sensor harness. So all of that's been removed and we're just kind of left with the bare essentials in here now. So I am gonna have to go through and get the rest of the wiring out of here. So you know, we'll get the coil out. Once we get this intercooler piping out, we'll get the rest of this wiring all disconnected. The headlight harness is actually gonna come out. This is all gonna get rewrapped and all cleaned up but we also need to get the inner cooler out which is hiding behind the front bumper which means we actually need to remove the whole front bumper cover which really isn't that hard guys and see here i've actually taken that nut off and then i'm like i better show you guys you know how to do this but it's just pretty much nuts all the way up and around on both sides here let's see here so one two three four, five, six, and then you got a couple on the upper radiator support and then this little crosser right here. And uh, we'll get all those off. We'll get this bumper cover off. Just like we have access to some of the light bulbs from under here. So we'll get those cranked out, get this bumper cover off. Find a few little gremlins. bracket that they did off the factory bumper mount here so again all this headlight harness needs to come out yeah so we'll undo this that'll allow us to get the uh, inner cooler out I'll rip the piping off I've actually already loosened it so maybe we can get it off now or actually maybe I'll leave it together Should we all leave it together that way I know where all the pipes go well guys, I think I'm gonna stop here because it's starting to get hot with the AC off. I didn't want the fan blades messing with the lighting and I didn't want the background noise and everything else. So I think it is a pretty good productive Sunday afternoon here. Inner cooler, all the piping is out, front bumper cover is off, K-member is out. And what did I say? K-member was gonna be on the ground in 30 minutes. I've been out here for an hour, so not too bad. Uh, next time will be, you know, I don't know if I'll show all this stuff, guys, of pulling the headlight harness and stuff out. I'll probably just pull everything off here. We'll start scuffing down and prepping, probably end up pulling the fenders off, to be honest with you. Um, so that, that way we just don't have to worry about any damage happening to them and going to go with all the Serbinator hardware and everything else underneath here to make sure everything's cleaned up. And we just want to make sure that there's no tape lines no possible room for overspray or any of that other stuff. Uh, Got to pull a dash out. I'm not going to put that one on film. Um, you guys have seen me remove dash after dash after dash. So that, that way we can get those heater core lines out. And, you know, the cord needs to be replaced. EVAP will get replaced. And the brake booster is most likely going to come out. I believe he's going with the new brake setup, but that is still to be confirmed. But there you go, a little bit of Sunday fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're enjoying the project. And there's definitely more parts all over the place here. Cars take up less room when they're put together. That is truth. It is now Monday. So yesterday we got the K-member out and the front bumper cover off, the intercooler, all those goodies. And now I'm just putting away, getting all the nitty gritty out of the bay. So you can see here, things like the horns, ground strap connectors heater core hardware radiator um condenser 
rubbers and sensors, all the airbag stuff has been removed and that is actually not going back in the car. That's actually gonna stay out. So I'm just going through, I'm gonna get like this power steering cooler loop out. All of this stuff, everything is coming off. So that way I can get this all cleaned, prepped, and then painted in satin black before we go ahead and do all the Scott Rod rivet in panels. In fact, the fenders are even gonna come off because I wanna make sure that I can get all up in here. This is all gonna end up being nice satin black finish, everything underneath here. So we get the rest of the brake lines off and rest the stuff off in the firewall here. Get the booster and master out, wiper motor, all this stuff has gotta come out guys. So that is pretty much what I am working on right now. I think the, you know, the headlight harness should be in a position to come out right now. So let me get that out. And like I said, I'm just kind of putting around right now because I'm actually waiting for the new ship box to show up and uh, should be here any minute in reality. It's going to merit its own video. Maybe you'll get a little sneak peek in this one. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm excited and I'm nervous at the same time of how shitty it's going to be. So anyway, stick around. We'll keep plugging away here. the truck guys let's see how bad this thing looks oh my god yeah that is a ship box would you look at that Front bumper melted itself right off. Ta-da, here we go guys, fenders are off. Front bumper covers off, everything is pretty much out. There's a few little things. I'll get the clutch cable out of there and sort out the brake lines and a few other things. Some things we're gonna have to mask, but I even got the boot that goes around where the uh, your steering shaft comes through just to avoid having to mask anything off we'll be able to get something from the back side and get a really nice finished product in here when uh, everything is said and done so i'm gonna go ahead clean stuff up i'll probably take the uh the front uh, rebar bumper off as well and i already just i was bored a little bit early earlier so i started scuffing down a little bit on this inner apron here but before i get too carried away going to cover the car in plastic and mask everything off that we're not going to want painted did find a little bit of corrosion starting right here so and this is like really not a huge deal but this is something that we definitely want to address now right so i will be getting the wire wheel and we will get rid of all of that i've got some Seymour high grade rust converter and primer so once we uh, have that all wired wheeled down spray a little bit of that on there and it'll leave a nice prime surface and then that'll allow us to um get that sprayed and covered up so probably you know we have to do some pretty creative masking in here just to make sure we don't get overspray on the weather stripping or on the in, inner part of the door and gonna pretty much go for you know we're gonna mask right up to that and we just want to kind of make it so that no additional paint will peel want to protect all this metal, make sure that nothing else can potentially corrode in the future. You know, where the paint flaked off here, we'll get that all cleaned up. Pulled the stickers off, soaking the glue down with some WD-40. That's a nice little trick if you don't have goo gone or goof off or whatever it might be. Um, use WD-40, that'll help you out. I uh, got a little bit, and again, guys, this isn't really, this is nothing in the grand scheme of things but here there we go we'll get this all cleaned up before that becomes a problem 
and uh, that's why we're doing this so that uh, we make sure that this car lives a nice long healthy life you know, if you see where the fenders go here you know there's uh there's gray and the uh, factory didn't do the best job at getting 100 percent paint coverage and there was scuffs and there was scrapes probably from motors coming in and out and everything else and for instance we'll make sure that we get this straightened out and get everything cleaned up here but the scott rod panels don't cover everything so what you want to make sure is that for whatever isn't covered or that it's exposed that everything is consistent looking like for instance the frame rail down there there's almost no black paint right and it almost looks brown you know you got black then brown because it's pretty much some black overspray on top of the factory gray primer giving it that brown tinge actually a little bit of corrosion right there too where the battery tray would bolt on to and a little bit of stuff down there so we get all that stuff cleaned up guys and um, everything will be nice and consistent and look the part underneath these scott rod panels once they're all bolted in Yellow lenses really do make a difference, guys. So, not that I wanted to bore you with a whole bunch of sanding and scuffing and prepping and all that other good stuff, but there's a little bit of a time lapse in there. Body and paint. A lot of us complain this day and age how much it is to paint your Fox body. And especially, you know, if you're comparing paint jobs to 20 years ago, 10 years ago even, well, the cars haven't got any nicer. In fact, the cars are more challenging. They take more time. They take more effort and i am fortunate enough to be working on a car like those few little areas that i just pointed out were the worst of this whole scenario now a lot of you out there you might not have rust but you might have had oil leaks you might have had ass battery acid leaks you might have had a car that was in a really dusty environment that has 100 200 300 000 miles on it and if you're wanting to go to this extent where you want to get paint in all the places that Ford didn't, this prep time, guys, like hours is hours, no matter how you look at it. And let me tell you, sanding, trying to get not only surfaces that are semi-flat, but getting in all the nooks and crannies, getting in all the places like in here, getting all of that area scuffed and prepped 
and cleaned. And remember, if you had an oily car, you'd be pressure washing, you'd be, you know, blowing air, you'd be trying to get all the sand and the dust from in between the frame rails. Maybe there is a little bit of scabby rust that you're dealing with. Maybe you're straightening out a lower radiator support. Guys, I'm super fortunate here. Now I'm probably 10, 12 hours into this project to get it to where it is right now. So from that first video of after I finished introducing the car to pulling all the drive line out, pulling the fenders and the bumper and getting all this scuff and prep work done, I'm about 12 hours, all right? Just to put things into perspective. Now, I still need to finish I got to pull that wiring harness back in through the car. I got to back mask all those holes off from the inside because I don't want overspray going in to the car. And I want to make sure that we're not masking around things when we're painting. We want this to look good. Things like, you know, Ford didn't take off the hood release when they painted the car. They had that on there and painted around it. Same goes for the fenders and everything else. It was all pre-assembled in many ways before they started shooting paint. So then I got to clean everything, mask everything up even further, make sure that I get masked underneath the car because I don't want overspray and stuff getting over all the nice clean parts on the underside. So there is a lot of work involved. So when you guys see these like eat off the floor, like absolute show car builds, stuff like this where the time's going in. And, a lot of those cars aren't this nice to begin with. So it takes double, triple, quadruple the amount of time to get even to where I've got here. So if I'm in for 12 hours, maybe it's 36 hours. They're welding up and shaving a whole engine bay. Could very well already be at 100 hours. You know what I mean? So keep that in your mind. We know what the hourly labor rate goes for this day and age. Don't be fooled. There's no way to do this cheap. The hours add up. And I proved that with the Shipbox Fox. So with that said, I gotta go ahead and finish removing some stuff. I'm gonna go back over everything, make sure that everything is scuffed. Cause guys, if you don't sand it, the paint's not gonna stick. Take the extra time to make sure that you prep your surfaces properly and do it right the first time. So that, that way you don't have problems in the future, especially a car as beautiful as this one which I know there's a lot of guys out there that there's clean cars and people rip them apart and do their crazy builds off them. And you're like, why did you take that clean car and build that one? Well, they did it to save all the time and energy and aggravation, right? Like if you can start off with a super clean base, you're already ahead of the game. Sometimes it's worth paying 10,000 more for the foundation that you're gonna build off because, well, you're gonna save 15, 20,000 in added headaches later on instead of dealing with something that had a bunch of problems to start with. So there's a little bit of perspective on projects and going through things and an update on the Black Notch project right here. So I'm gonna keep going. Actually, you know, I'm in a break right now. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, gonna grab a beer and I might go mess around with Project Fox and Eyes a little bit because it is a Saturday after all. That's right, guys. No rest for the wicked. Anyways, stick around. I'm sure this episode isn't done yet. Before we get to spray in the engine bay, we obviously want to make sure that our scut rod panels fit. And I've already been doing some trimming, as it says right in the instructions, that no two of these Fox bodies are built the same. Therefore, you may have to trim to get things to fit and do what you want. So my last set actually fit quite nice and they're actually sitting in Jerry's 93 hatch, but here's one area here in the front that I was kind of clearancing to make a little bit of room here. And you can see this is a pretty tight fit here and this is super tight here. And ultimately, I think I'm gonna have to take out part of this section here to be able to get it to fit the way I want. So even right now, there we go. Yeah. 
Look at you working them step runs. Boy, I wish I had a camera right now. It's on camera. Me oh. cursing these things because they don't <laughs> fit right. But hey, in the disclaimer, it says none of these two cars are the same. You're going to have to trim. But the ones I gave you fit perfect. 